Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I wanna introduce the notion of an abstract data type. This is super important. In fact, anytime you hear ADT in relation to computer science or programming, I want you to be able to immediately think abstract data type and know what that is. Now, an abstract data type is a type or class for objects whose behavior is defined by a set of values and a set of operations on those values. You might have heard me say the definition of a data type, okay, not abstract data type, just data type, is a set of values and a set of operations on those values. So an abstract data type, the only more specific part of this definition over a general data type is that it's for objects, okay? So we don't really start thinking about abstract data types until we get to object-oriented programming where we can start implementing our own classes that implement an abstract data type. So let's think about an abstract data type we've been working with so far. And that abstract data type is the list. Okay, you might not have heard me call it a list, but we have been in fact working with the list ADT. Okay, so a list ADT. What would be a set of values of a list? Well, it would be all of the values that are stored in the sequence, right? What would be a set of operations on those values? All right, so let's say I have a sequence of values like three, four, five. Let's say this is my list. Okay, these are the values in it. What are some operations I might wanna do on those values? Well, I might want to print out my list so I could see the contents, three, four, five. I might want to be able to add a new value to my list, maybe at the beginning or maybe at the end or maybe somewhere in the middle. Maybe I want to add a 3.5 right here. I might want to be able to remove some values from my list. Maybe I change my mind and I don't want that 3.5 there anymore. I should be able to remove it, right? I should be able to figure out how many items or how many values are in my list, right? So in this case, one, two, three, four, five, right? I should be able to get the value five back to tell me there are five items in my list. I should be able to clear out the entire list, right? The whole thing is gone and now it's an empty list. I should be able to easily find out is the list empty or not? So these are all common operations that someone would want to use on a list abstract data type. Now, the cool thing about ADTs is they just expose the values and the operations on those values. Okay, how those values are actually being stored or how those operations are actually being implemented is abstracted from the user of an ADT. Hence the abstract data type part of an ADT, it's abstract, okay? We don't know how this list is actually implemented in the program. All we know is here are the values and here are some operations like add, remove, print, clear, et cetera, that we can use on those values. So that's what this second and third paragraph here in the notebook is saying. So a user only needs to know what a data type can do, not how it will be implemented, okay? what a data type can do, not how it will be implemented. Okay, that's abstracted from the user. So this last part I think is kind of helpful. Think of an abstract data type as a black box, which hides the interstructure and design of the data type. And just for giving credit where credit is due, I adopted these three statements from a site called geeksforgeeks.com, which is a really great site uh, for all things related to computer science and programming. All right, so let's bring this back to our example. Let's say, once again, I have our uh, three, four, five. Three, four, five. If I told you right now, go write a C++ program to store three, four, five, right? Store the list of values three, four, five. How would you do it? Well, many of you would probably do it differently, right? Some of you might immediately say, oh, well, I would store that list of numbers in an array. But some of you might say, no way, I would store it in a vector. And some of you who have watched some of my linked list videos might say, well, I'm gonna store it in a linked list, right? 
That's what's so cool about abstract data types is they can be implemented using a variety of options. We could implement 3, 4, 5 in C++ quite easily as an array, as a vector, or as a linked list. That linked list could be singly linked, it could be doubly linked, it could be circular, it could include a tail pointer in addition to a head pointer, it could include something called a dummy head node at the beginning. I mean, how this linked list is implemented is up to the programmer. As long as it exposes all of the common operations on the sequence of values it stores, then we could say it's an implementation of the list abstract data type, right? The actual implementation is in a black box where the user can't see what's in the black box, but it can see the interface of operations that that black box exposes. And that would be your public member functions. All right, so there are a few trade-offs obviously associated with implementing a list as an array, a vector, and a linked list. For example, an array is fixed in size, right? If we say needed to add a six element to our three, four, five array, we would have to dynamically allocate a new array of size one bigger, copy over the three, four, five, put the six in the position where the user wants it, maybe beginning, end, or middle, and then deallocate the three, four, five array. Well, that has time complexity big O of n, right? Because I had to traverse through the array and make a copy of it. So it's linear time complexity, not very efficient. Well, a vector under the hood is actually also implemented as an array. So even though we think of vectors as growing and shrinking in size, the vector itself is abstract, right? We don't know how that black box of that vector is implemented unless we go poke around and find out. So just because we use a vector doesn't mean that we're getting that great of a uh, performance payoff by growing and shrinking with our, with our list sizes. And then a linked list, we, we do know that linked lists can grow and shrink in size, but of course they have their trade-offs as well, which is I can't randomly access an element in the middle of the linked list as fast as I can in the middle of an array, right? So how we implement our list ADT is very dependent on our application, right? If we're going to implement an application and we want it to be as efficient as possible, then we're not going to willy-nilly just choose an array or just choose a linked list, right? Even with all these different subtypes of linked list, we're going to be very conscientious about which one we choose. So this is a brief introduction to an abstract data type. Just to summarize, you've really been working with the list abstract data type. It stores a sequence of values. There are some common operations on those sequence of values that are part of the list ADT. Like for example, adding items, removing items, printing out the sequence, determining how many items are in the sequence, searching for an item in the sequence, etc. How those operations are actually implemented and how those values in the sequence are actually stored is not the business of the ADT. It's abstract, right? It exposes an interface. That's the business of the data structure, the design of the data structure that actually implements the ADT. So that would be one of these guys over here if you're thinking about what are some of the linear data structures we've learned so far in this class. All right, as a little bit of a preview, I do wanna scroll down a little bit here and talk about the ADTs that we're going to cover in this class at a minimum. So we're gonna cover the list ADT. In fact, informally, we just did. Operations of the list ADT include, say, um, adding an item uh, to the front of the list, adding an item to the end of the list, and then adding an item in order, right? Say my list is always sorted, then I might wanna be able to add a new value anywhere in the list. I could do all of these for remove as well, right? I could do remove at front, I could do remove at end, I could also do just a generic 
remove where I search for a value, say four, like this over here, uh, and I just remove that value. So I'll say remove item or remove value. I might wanna be able to print or display the list, get the size of the list, clear out the list. So if there's three elements in it and I clear it out, there should be zero elements and no memory leaks. I may also want to search for an item. I may want to find out uh, is the list empty or not. These are all really common operations on list ADTs. All right, so another one that we're gonna go over in this class next is the stack ADT. So we'll cover stacks uh, in a few other videos, but at least I'll write down what their exposed public interface is. So a stack ADT, you can push an item onto the stack. You can pop an item off of the stack. You can clear the stack. And you can also peek and take a look at the item on top of the stack. And then one more ADT I'll put in here because it's coming up real soon in the class is the Q ADT. Okay, so with a Q ADT, you can NQ an item, which is like inserting an item into the list or into the queue. Uh, you can DQ an item from the list, which is like removing an item from the queue. Uh, you can peek look at the item at the front of the queue. You can also clear, remove all of the elements or all the items in the queue. Uh, so here's three examples of ADTs. We can implement these ADTs with a variety of different linear data structures. Stacks and queues can be implemented with arrays or linked lists, for example. The ADT, the abstract part of it, just exposes the public interface at which other people, like users and programmers, can interact with. 